You've probably heard that we're living in the golden age of television. Or maybe it's the Platinum Age. The Einsteinium Age? Whatever. The point is, TV is way better than it used to be. And you could say the same thing for TV title sequences, the video introductions to each show. They used to be afterthoughts, a bunch of B-roll clips and actors staring into the camera. But now they're artistic statements of their own. They can be bittersweet, or energetic, or funny, or sad. In the streaming era, when we watch our favorite programs anywhere and at any time, titles help get us in the right mood, even if we're in the middle of our morning commute. You know, the main title sequence is, it functions a little bit like an airlock between everyday life and uh, the state that you go into when you come back to watch a show. That's Patrick Clare, creative director of Elastic, an L.A. production studio. He's the force behind title sequences like AMC's Halt and Catch Fire and HBO's Westworld. He says the revolution in title sequences kicked in in the mid-90s when new software programs like Adobe's Creative Suite unlocked the potential of a new generation of designers. At the same time, we started watching TV differently. Before then, most TV shows were episodic. Viewers checked in from time to time, but they didn't have to watch every episode. Credits helped introduce new viewers who were just tuning in for the first time. Just Sometimes they'd go so far as to explain the show's the entire premise. Of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. By the 1990s, some shows were breaking that mold. One early standout was the title sequence for The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which was more like a music video than a title sequence. In fact, it was directed by the same guy who directed The Fresh Prince's video for Parents Just Don't Understand, and you can see how similar they are. But that was just early rumblings of the revolution that would really hit a few years later. When you watched that, I mean, everybody kind of took a step back and was like, wait a minute, what's, what's happening? That's Lola Landkick and Will Perkins, who run a website called The Art of the Title. They point out that this sequence does the opposite of what most titles do. It hides way more than it reveals. Tony's the only character, and you never really see him. The editing, the cinematography cuts Tony up. You don't see him full figure. You see his cigar, you see his eyes, you see his hands on the wheel. You don't get a full picture yeah. of him until the very end when he gets out. Who is this guy? Yeah. And that's, and that's the show, right? With The Sopranos, HBO ushered in a new wave of prestige television, and its title sequences were equally ambitious. Instead of the usual 30 seconds, they were allowed to run for 60 or even 90 seconds. Designers were encouraged to discover new techniques, like placing two-dimensional drawings in 3D space, or using found footage in new ways to create a kind of tone poem. Those examples inspired Patrick Clare when he designed what would become one of the most famous title sequences of the modern era, True Detective. The basic idea came from Clare's first call with the showrunner and director. In the show, they were using the broken, polluted landscapes to uh, talk about the, the broken, poisoned people that were in the narrative, and these kinds of these people that had been exploited and, and, um, and destroyed by, um, by what had happened to them. And so that just seemed in very literal terms to be, well, I guess we'll just make broken portraits out of broken landscapes. The showrunners already had a song they wanted to use, so Claire started putting together books full of images that spoke to this feeling of brokenness. One main source was a book called Petrochemical America by photographer Richard Mizrock. His team also figured out a way to take footage from the show and slow it down to one-tenth speed, which lent it a dreamlike quality. And he ended the sequence in flames, another idea that was inspired by his conversation with the show's creators. The, these are characters who are facing a personal apocalypse. And, uh, and that to me just sort of opened the door to being able to go into this world of, uh, of, of literally this sort of biblical apocalypse. True Detective was hugely influential. M maybe a little too influential. But there's a lot more than just moody HBO dramas out there. We're seeing all kinds of different networks and shows take on ambitious title sequences. We're seeing titles that focus on type, like Stranger Things and Mr. Robot. We're seeing postmodern title sequences that play with the conventions of internet videos or musical comedy. We've seen remixes 
and guest artists. And we've even seen title sequences without any shows attached. A pinch of salt and laughter too. If you think about it, TV titles are kind of like what music videos used to be. A design medium that started as a kind of advertisement, but became its own form of artistic expression. And just as MTV became a breeding ground for a generation of artists, the people who were making today's TV title sequences may be tomorrow's film directors, visual artists, or showrunners themselves. 